Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It is a day 83 of spiritual health care. So welcome. Uh, it is it's a beautiful day here in Edmonton. I hope you guys are doing amazing as well. Um, it's hard to believe it's day 83, uh, but it's good to be here and it's good to to see everybody coming in. Uh, good morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, this is going to be a really, really great day. I've got um, I, I've got some awesome questions that have, have come in. So I want to I want to grab onto those today. Good morning, Ed and Patricia and Kaz, nice to see you guys, nice to see everyone, um, it is always, it was always good to see everybody in the morning, and uh, yeah, as I say, lots of, uh, I had a sort of an aha moment last night um, that I wanted to share with all of you, and uh, and as I say, talk about um, not only the power of thought, but also um, some up and coming, in, uh, people who are up and coming investigators, um, what advice that I would pass on to them, because there's been a lot of people that have, have asked me about that. I've, I've gotten a, quite a few emails about it. So I want to chat about that today too, um, is what would you, what have you learned going forward? What have you learned in the creation of Entity Seeker and, um, and, and doing this for, for like 20 years? It's, it's been, it's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, good morning, Sally. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Tech all the way from Texas. Um, yeah, it's 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 been it's been such an interesting journey, and I think the 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 question is a really really good one. Um, you know what what have I learned? What are the best lessons that I've learned th um, from Entity Seeker, as well as um, what I would pass on to people uh, in terms of investigations and and things like that? What would I what would I tell them? What would I what would I tell you guys? Um, because yeah, there there's a fair amount stuff that you don't learn like in the books. You know, it's stuff that you kind of learn as you're going along. Good morning, Lori. Nice to see you. Good morning, Eric. Nice to see you. <laughs> all the people. It's like the, the chat thing on the bottom seems to be working again. For like a few days, it just wasn't working. But now it seems to be like popping up, which is which is really good. I don't know what was going on there for a little while. It was like it wasn't it wasn't clicking. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's good morning, Nigel. Nice to see you. It, it's crazy. Like um, the uh, building Entity Seeker, like when I started versus like what it is now. And it just... I think I always had that that general intention and that long vision for it, but there's been so much that's cropped up along the way. Um, and I see so many people, especially after the TV show started to become a really big thing, uh, what like wanting to get into this and wanting to, you know, move into this field. I had a, a the the question actually stemmed from. Uh, a mom whose son they were doing like, and I thought this was really neat. So they were doing a, um, a, uh, like, what do you want to be when you grow up day at their school? And, uh, he had to write like a little essay paper about what they, what he wanted to do. And the, the thing that he really wanted to do is be a, be a paranormal researcher. So, so the question that ended up coming in was about, was about that. And, and, uh, his, his mom wanted to know like, where, what do you do? Like where, you know, like, where do you go? What do you do? Um, and, uh, you know, how does, uh, you know, what, what advice would you, would you, would you give? And I think it's, it's a really great question because, um, there are so many, um, there's so many kids, first of all, we talked about this a couple of days ago, I guess, on, on, on spiritual health care that, that have wanted to get into this field. And that this is such a, a, a blessing and opportunity to be able to get kids to understand, um, the unknown, get kids to be able to plug in, um, to, to curiosity rather than seeing the unknown as something to fear. Um, so there's like a, but there's a bunch of different things that, that it, it brings to the table. But so I want to tackle this. So up and coming investigators, like here's the thing: when when I when when I started, um, my my partner in crime, Stephanie and I, uh, Stephanie Wirtz, uh, she she passed away uh, quite a number of years ago now, but um, she and I really started with this this great intention of wanting to take the patterns that we were seeing in in people's people's thought habits in the hauntings in like and, uh, break them down understand them and make this stuff accessible to people um who are uh you know who are, are starting to step into the the field of the paranormal whether it be through a haunting something that's going on in their environment or something that they want to actually do and pursue as a uh you know a career or education uh base or whatever that is um so when when I'm, I'm talking with people that really want to get into it, my first, my first big question to them is to define why, why, what is it that, what is it that you are looking to do 
Um, what is it that you are looking to take from from this and what are you willing to do to be of service? So here's the th here's the thing. Here's the thing with Entity Seeker. I'll tell you guys straight up. So when a lot of when I what I see a lot of people and like these these paranormal groups and stuff like that doing is that they kind of they, they look to go into these places and you know get their evidence, get get a scare, get whatever, you know, whatever it is. And they kind of they, they just check in, they're there for a little bit and then they leave. And it's usually those groups that end up either like they break apart, they burn out, they, you know, just people just get, they get fed up with it. They don't want to do it anymore. Um, and they feel like this stuff becomes kind of a dead end for them, right? Where it's like, okay, well, we can only do so much research. You can only do, which isn't true, but, um, but that's usually what they'll come to me with. So here's the thing is that um, when we, when we start to look at this as something that we can do to be of service, it changes our perspective. It changes our um, intention and how we answer that why question. Um, and this is so. This is what I've discovered with Entity Seeker is that Entity Seeker is is in, in this. Uh, we'll use the example of, of a corporation, right? A corporation is separate from us, right? It's separate from ourselves. It's separate from. It, it's legally defined as a separate entity um, who is apart from. Uh, you know, apart from us. So say, for example, if that company gets gets sued or attacked or something like that, it has nothing to do with the creator. It actually has to do with the company itself. So the company itself is separation from that person. But this is, this is the interesting comparison is that thought is really defined by that as well, where thought is something that is outside of the creator. Because once that corporation, for example, is created, that it exists independently. It's just got this whole, it's this whole thing, right? It's got, it's got its own state of being. It's got its own thing. So when we look at something like, um, you know, a, a, whether it be a company or an idea or anything like that, we've got this sort of thought based thing that starts to formulate itself. It starts to snowball. It starts to, to pile onto itself. Um, and what I've discovered is that we can only really be, be understood and I guess you know the as the Christians would kind of say like delivered um, by what is in me but not what is around me and sometimes we kind of have to shut down our eyes so that we can have some insight we just we just do um, so I that is one of probably my best lessons from from entity seekers to understand that it is me being of service to an idea or a thought or a a process and once Entity Seeker was was off and running and off and rolling, um, it picked up its own momentum. It picked up its own uh, its own just trajectory. And what I noticed was that when it was left to its own devices, when I was there to to um, to to fuel it, um, to you know offer ideas and to offer thought and offer you know whatever that was, I began to realize that that it was actually opening doors. It was. It was, you know, pulling in like a magnet, all of these different opportunities and people and people that wanted to listen and all of these different things. It was, it's very interesting. Um, and as I say, probably one of, one of my, my first lessons with Entity Seeker was exactly that, is that, that sometimes Source does its best work in the dark. It really does. So it, think about it this way. If you've got, um, uh, for, for those of you guys who are investigators, you'll, you'll get this right away, especially if like the old school when we were still doing like film, <laughs> there wasn't digital. Um, you know, when you go say, for example, to develop film, right? How do you have to develop film? You have to turn around and develop film in the, in the dark, right? You have to be in a dark room. And, uh, so you have that film and whatever, and, you know, you throw it in the, uh, you know, you, you, you throw it in the liquid and whatever, and you let that develop. And interestingly enough, if you let too much light in too soon, guess what happens, right? You get a light leak, you, right? You, you wreck the film, you wreck the exposure because you end up getting a light leak. Um, and, and then it gets mistaken for, and then in the paranormal world, it gets mistaken for everything under the sun. Every ghost phenomenon. is <laughs> like, you, you got a ghost. No, it's a light leak. Stop. Um, but it, but it's, it's, it's very symbolic. So if, if you, when we realize that source does its best work in the dark and then, 
once it's ready to allow that light and allow that ex that that exposure to happen then then you know all of a sudden that we can see this this beautiful picture but we don't always get to see the picture right away um and entity seeker has kind of been like this for me where sometimes you know it'll it'll just be it'll be quiet for the longest time and then all of a sudden this like ideas and and uh opportunities and things like that will start to show up as long as i can sit and be of service and understand that it is not mine so the way I, this is the other thing I've had, the the one question that I got recently this week was, you know, do you collaborate with others? And this kind of all is going to factor in here in a second, where it's not really me that is, 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 is doing necessarily the collaboration. Um, what I find is that when, when people come in, oftentimes they're of two mindsets. They're either the people that want to, that, that want to further uh, uh, you know, other people's connection, they want to be of service to other people, and they see this as a, a, a good opportunity to be able to put their, put their skills into, into use. Or um, you get people that see Entity Seeker as a platform that they want to then control and move on and use that to further what they, what they want, what they, they've got their own sort of agenda, or they see that it's on television or whatever. And uh, what's, what's so interesting about that is that th those people end up somehow end up getting pushed out. Like they will get something will happen, and it just it will it won't work for them. It just won't work. It's it's just the wrong energy. It's the wrong mentality, and it just doesn't jive. Like there's, there's the frequencies just don't line up there, and they'll they'll end up kind of falling away. It's really intriguing, but um, but this is this is something that I that I've learned. The other thing that I've learned with with NT Seeker and, and paranormal research um, moving forward is that is that you know of course we talk a lot about you know people who have passed over and people who have have um, you know uh, you know lost their lives and we go through rituals like funerals and and all of these kind of things. But have you ever noticed that like planting and burial is actually the same? It's actually the same thing. Um, so this is one thing that I've noticed as well is that when we when we move forward as researchers, we have to be really conscious of, of this concept, which is planting. When you're burying something, you're basically you're covering it up to, to get it to like to stay there to you're, you're expecting that to be something that is stagnant. Right. Um, and but interestingly, when you're, you're planting something and you're putting these seeds in and you're, you're watering these seeds and you're covering that up, um, planting is actually making it move in a new direction it moves in a new direction it, it it shifts it changes it um it grows there's there's creation um you know it's something where like the earth and the soil is working together to and and you know sources is, is flowing through that to get something to expand there's expansion and movement and so planting and burial is interesting because it's the same process it's the same process, and when we when we look at this with in terms of, of this idea of uh, of research, and when we move into to the paranormal, this is oftentimes one of the things that, that people really have to think about. What are we looking to do? Are we looking to turn around and and take what you're doing and make it stagnant? Are you doing the same thing over and over and over again, or are you doing something that is actually planting something that's going to move you further down the road, um, or move your client further down the road, or research or the field further down the road? What are you doing? Is it burying or is it planting? What what's up? Um, Lori is saying having a service. Uh, heart benefits yourself as much if not more than the person you are helping it's much like forgiveness yeah absolutely that's such a great point um and uh hello to everybody by the way who just came in this morning it's good to see you all um i know there's uh greg and daryl or uh, uh dale he's come in and there's there's people that i've missed on along the way um i will like grab some of the comments here too as well um People are saying, oh, they didn't realize Steph had passed away. Yeah, no, she's passed. She passed away quite a long time ago um, from uh, complications of uh, bronchitis, of all things. But she had muscular dystrophy. That's why she was in a wheelchair. Um, but she's still she's still kicking around. <laughs> like, she doesn't go away. That's for sure. She doesn't go away. Um, so here's the thing. So when we're when we're building um, research, whether it be research companies or research, uh, you know, organizations, or for me, Entity Seeker is kind of a a mixed bag of of uh, of you know various educational resources, which is what I wanted it to be to begin with. Um, 
and uh, and 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 live shows and and places where people can learn to to come to get information that I hope is as 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 grounded and as solid as I can I can present to you guys. Um, but uh, entity seekers is a thought as well, and you know it's a conviction, it's a premise, and um, you know if I died, for example, entity seeker is not going to disappear. It's 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 an energy, it's a thought in and of itself. So as we're building this stuff, as we're building, um, as we're we're moving into you know whatever whatever that looks like for you as a as an investigator. Um, we have to start thinking that that you know what is it that we are are actually building and creating you know whether it be and maybe for you guys it's a it's a company maybe it's a company you've always wanted to build or it's a you know it's a project you've wanted to do or a book or you know it, this applies to pretty much everything um, but this but entity seeker as I say it's my model because that's what I've I've kind of learned on um, but you know we we have this we have this problem right now where we kind of in, in society, in the world in general, is that we kind of dumb down ideas. And, you know, you look at all these people who have studied for, for years in theater and arts and dance and, you know, all of these different different avenues. And, you know, and they're out there searching for a damn job when you've got people who are, you know, sitting on, on uh, uh, social media that are, you know, famous because they're cute. <laughs> you know, they're famous because they're cute. They haven't done anything. Um and, and that becomes kind of a problem because, you know, if ideas at the end of the day equal economy, right? Like that's, that's how this stuff works. So we serve, we serve in, in one massive way and that's with our mind. That's, that's how we are of service, you know, and, and people always laugh because they always think to themselves, well, you know, how is, you know, how is, how is thought being of service? If thought and idea is everything. It's everything. Um, and you know you are one thought away all the time from every single thing you've ever wanted you know the question is is do you have the courage to actually think do you have the courage to think because it, let me tell you it's it's funny to see um you know even investigators and things like that who will go out and they form these these paranormal groups and whatever and they just repeat the same thing that they're seeing on television there's no um there's no investment into say for example uh you know reading the the latest papers from maybe oxford or edinburgh or um you know yale yale's got this amazing program out now called i think it's called the cope program um for uh sci research um, I mean, these are pe people that they, they've worked for the, for lifetimes on on this. It's it's incredible. Um, and here we are, you know, people are watching these television shows and then going and copying out what they're seeing. And we can't do that. We have to make sure that as we're moving forward and we're moving through, we have to we have to get educated. And Stephanie and I were really were really hell bent on that when we were starting Entity Seeker. Uh, we spent about seven or eight years. Um, just reading and working and before we touched anything like you know we didn't just form all of this stuff and just go um, it was about seven or eight years for us before we actually you know made a move publicly and, and went went ahead with things it was a lot of time that we we put in um, to try to make sure that we were not only getting our information right but but understanding the depth in which we wanted to create with the the clients and the people that were going in around us um you know it oftentimes the the press and the media always makes it look like it was this you know this one hit one overnight success thing um that ends up happening and that's just it's not true you have to have a long vision and you have to be able to be dedicated into that long vision in order to to make it work so so the one thing i would definitely ask people who are up and coming in this is what are you willing to do what are you willing to do? What are you willing to give up? I mean, Stephanie and I, I mean, we didn't, when, when we were back, even when we were back in school, because we started when we were really young, you know, we didn't go to the school dances. We weren't going to hang out at bars after school. We weren't, you know, hanging out with our friends. We weren't, like, all of those things we weren't doing because this is what we wanted to do. And we, we, we let all that go because we had this long vision for what, what we wanted. And, and for us, it ultimately you know, it didn't feel like a sacrifice because we believed so much in the vision and the thought and the idea. And uh, it didn't take long for us to start manifesting the, the, the right people that were coming in and going like, hey, we can help you with this. Hey, here's a television platform or here's, 
you know, here's um, a place to do lectures or here's, you know, whatever, whatever it was, right? I'll do a website for you or I'll do this or I'll do, you know, we were manifesting all these people that believed in it and they didn't want anything from us. They just believed in what we were doing enough that they were just, they were willing to, to, to put some, put some, some work into it because they saw it. And they saw it because we saw it so damn clearly, like so clearly as to what we wanted to do. And the first lectures that we ever did was one called Teaching the Living because we wanted to present our program to people. Um, and it was actually in the, the rental room of Stephanie's old condo building. And we would, we would sell, we sold tickets at the time. Like there was no internet sales or anything like that. We had to, we pounded the pavement. We printed up posters we printed up flyers. We, we spent at the time, it was like 40 bucks on, on flyers, which for us at the time was like a ridiculous amount of money. And, uh, and we did, we, we, we went for days and days and days. We walked downtown, we walked all over the place, hanging up these flyers, um, making sure people could, could see them and, and come in and, and whatever. And it was just, it was what we, like what we talked about yesterday, this kind of leap of faith and the leap of faith really had nothing to do, <laughs> nothing to do with intellect because we had no reason to think that anybody was going to show up. We had no guarantee that anybody was going to show up, but we put the money in and we rented the space and whatever. And then lo and behold, our first workshop, our first little lecture is sold out, is sold out. And people, people came to it, um, uh, that were, were absolutely fascinated. There really wasn't anything like it at the time. Um, and it really became a big thing. So, um, we, we really have to, we have to, you know, be able to look at that shadow saying, I see myself being rich and pampered. You know what? Why not? Right? Why not? The universe is here for abundance. That's, that's what this is. It's, it's all about abundance. And it was when we, we become, when we become in service, it's amazing what will be given back. Um, you know, we talked in, uh, a, a number of classes back with the law of, uh, uh, you know, a, a law of sacrifice and the, and the law of, uh, uh, you know, being receptive. And, um, and that's, that's really the thing is that, you know, when we turn around that law of sacrifice, when, you know, when we give, um, when we put into something, that level of energy, it's amazing what will actually come back to us. Right. And, and when we're willing to, to be at that level and hold ourselves to this, that level of excellence, it's, it's incredible what ends up happening. Uh, my partner said to me, this was a, a number of months ago now, but he was like, uh, he said something to me that really stuck with me. And he said, he said, some people have never, ever been held to the bar of excellence. They've just, it's not been required. And I thought that was so powerful because I, I think that's the one thing that Entity Seeker has done for me is that it's held me to the level of excellence. That is what's required. It's not a matter of, you know, oh, that would be nice. It's just, no, if you are not that, then it's not going to work. It's not going to work. So that's that's really what it is. Is you know, are you holding yourself to the bar of excellence? And is something in your experience, is your vision holding you to the bar of excellence? Because if it isn't, then it's too small. It's too small. You're thinking too small. Um, you know, there should be that level where you are always being held to excellence. That's one of the reasons why I get up every single morning and come and do this with you guys, um, is that it has to, it has to be at that, at that level. Um, and you look, if you look at all the great masters, the great teachers, the, the people who are, you know, inspiring this world moving forward today, everything that they have, they, they are working, working to in their vision requires that level of excellence every single one of them every time um you know you can have and here's the, here's the cool thing so your as we know your thoughts are either either dragging you down or pulling you up right it's like one or the other it's they're doing one or the other and you and when you're we're, you're doing uh you know anything to do with the paranormal it's the same thing um so here's the thing so you can have the same address you can have the same place. You can have the same everything. You can have somebody walk into the same room uh, in the same building that looks like the same thing. And you can end up, you can have one person that sees something like a, you know, maybe a, a small shack in a garden, right? You can have somebody that sees a small shack in the garden. That's their, their premise for that property. Or you can have somebody that comes in and sees something so much greater so much greater and something that is expansive and growing and something that, that is, 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 is unprecedented maybe to the world. And, but it's the same address. It's the same piece of property. It's the same damn thing. So really what it comes down to with, with paranormal research, um, and parent, like any, any of that stuff, um, 
is that we have to understand that it's the level at which we think that is going to bring this field, bring your life, bring whatever it is to that next to that next experience. That's what it is. It's the level at which you think and it's the level at which you were willing, like we talked about yesterday, to take that leap of faith because we know that the leap of faith does not does not stem up from the platform of intellect. It stems from something else. It stems from that connection. So when you understand that it's your level of thought coupled with the idea that you are that you are you can step off from a, this this platform of uh you know of faith and connection and understanding that the universe will open those doors for you then you you can you can snowball an idea or a thought into something that is 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 absolutely the some of the most brilliant creations in the world um, but it really is what level at which you are what level are you thinking at are you requiring are you requiring excellence and is your vision requiring excellence of you because you have to require it here's the here's the other thing about this you have to require something of your vision you know and people don't usually think about that because you know we are we, you know it is so important to be of 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 service to whatever it is you're doing um, however the the other problem is the fact that yeah we have to be able to require something of the vision um, and if it pulls excellence from you, if you realize, yeah, you're going to have to get up every day, you're going to have to put something into it every day, you know, you're going to have to, to put the same energy into what you're seeing as you would into your a relationship or, you know, your kids or whatever that is for you. Um, that's, that's really, 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 really the, the foundations of of so much of, of of paranormal research and building a company like uh you know whether it be entity seeker or whatever as i say it's not a company it's a it's a thought it's a premise it's a it's a conviction um and uh you know it's, it's ever expanding i talked to uh um some some web designers a little while ago i do my own web design and stuff like that and um i uh, uh i was talking to some some promoters a little while ago and they said they said you do too much you do too much. There's just too much. What do you want to focus? What do you, what do you want to focus on? What's the one thing you want to focus on? And I told them, I said, you're missing the, you're missing the picture. You're missing the picture because the focus is the education. The focus is the experiences and the, the, the avenues to, to uh, expand this information and knowledge. So, um, but they, they were like, well, well, do you, maybe you should just do do classes and not these other things focus on the classes and i said you you missed the point is that it's it's about these 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 avenues and it's all one vision but they couldn't get to the they couldn't get to the the, the full thing they couldn't see the big picture because they're very they're small the, the small thinkers so it's really it's very interesting um so that being said don't tell your vision to small minds don't do that don't do that they are the, like that it, it's, it's a bad idea <laughs> don't do that don't do that uh it'll like it'll knock you out quick so yeah don't um but anyway i wanted to um read a really great uh segment from uh faith in the valley today that i found that i thought was awesome and it's um uh by as a ariana van zandt she's just incredible she's incredible but i wanted to um read a little bit from this for you guys today because i think it's such a great reminder of who we are and what we what we're all about so check this out you are blessed. It might not look like that or feel that way right now, but it's true. If you want to know how blessed you are, think back to a situation you thought was right for you and admit how wrong you were. At the time, you may not have realized you were growing. Say, planting and burial, same thing. There was no way to look back then that something bigger and better was on the other side of something painful, ugly, and uncomfortable. But now look where you are and remember where you were. Realize that where you are right now is not where you're going to be at some point in the near future. Whether you love it or hate it, your current condition is only temporary. Do your best. Do what you can. Give what you have to give. And remember, you are still growing. You are learning. In fact, you are earning new degrees of wisdom. Sure, you have some grief. You have fears. But you might, you might even have bouts of pain and sadness. However, around the corner from where you are, you will be able to look back and see how truly blessed you are. And so 
So check it out. Check it out again. It, it does. It comes back to that whole thing. You know, is plant, planting and burial. Burial, same planting burial, same process. We're either covering, we're covering shit up, or we turn around and we're, you know, we're 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 fueling something, right? We're putting stuff in. We're fueling something, but it's the same. It looks the same. It looks the same. So it's tricky. So every. Anyway, you guys, I wanted to send you off with some peace affirmations today, as we always do. So everybody take a breath. I'm a channel of peace and well-being, and my need for peace is abundantly met. I unconditionally accept, love, and appreciate myself and who I am. I recognize I am grateful for the abundance that is constantly flowing into my life, which I can choose to allow or not. I feel with every breath a sense of peace and love. I help others by maintaining and tending to my connection with Source as much as possible. This well-being is accessible to me, even in a sea of uncertainty. At this moment, all is well. I am able to liberate myself from my past and live with peace and serenity. I can see and appreciate all the beauty and abundance of the life around me. I am able to embrace love while letting go of fear. And I find peace, the soothing silence of my inner being. Everybody take a breath. Thank you guys for another morning of our spiritual health care. Day 83. Day 83. It's crazy. It's crazy. I will see you guys tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Mountain Time. Uh, please keep the questions coming. Please keep them coming. There's so there's so many. I'm like piecing through them as best I can. Um, so please keep them coming because I love them. They're brilliant. Um, you guys are so smart. <laughs> I, love, I love you guys. They're so smart. It's so cool. It's so awesome. I will see you guys tomorrow morning. Spiritual health care. As always, for anybody new, you can go to entityseeker.ca or Entity Seeker, uh, the YouTube channel. So it's youtube.com slash Entity Seeker. And um, I will uh, see you guys tomorrow morning, as always. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs>